Not only two weeks ago, Nissan was supposed to invest heavily in Fisker and they'd be sharing electrical components together. In theory, Nissan could be building EV trucks for Fisker, the Alaska concept, um, as well as Nissan could have an electric frontier on that same platform. What's going on today is Nissan and Honda could be partnering up to make vehicles better and cheaper. Let's get into it. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Kirk. I talk about industry auto news. Subscribe for more of that and smash the like button if you're like me and you're like, what the heck is going on? This is a fun story. I don't know if what kind of fruits we'll see from it, if any, because this is not a done deal. But like I said, hit that like button if you're interested in it and uh, have more questions. We're going to have a lot more questions and answers in this video. But Nikkei Asia is coming out with this information. You guys have been messaging me and I've said, no, I'm not going to cover this news today because I'm tired. I just have been driving the new Santa Fe in Nashville, but I can't talk about those driving impressions till the 19th. But I just got back earlier today. I was just going to relax, kick it with the wife and the family. And yeah, instead, I'm back to the grindstone with this news because this is not something I've ever seen before. Nissan weighs EV partnership with Honda. That's a headline for the ages. They mentioned this um, collaboration could include development of shared electric vehicle platform. Before we get into fur any further, we have to know at least what's going on in the United States with Honda. Honda, let me pull up the article real quick. Yeah, this happened when I was in Japan. At the Japan Mobility Show, it's just breaking news there. Honda was canceling its plans with General Motors to create affordable EVs together, share platforms. And now just a few months later, we're getting reports of Honda working potentially with Nissan on electric vehicles. Nissan has had uh, promises out of Canton, Mississippi with four electric vehicles coming in 2026, but that got pumped out to 2027 at the earliest of, of two sedans, one Nissan, one Infiniti, and two crossovers, one Nissan and one Infiniti, fully battery electric on, on an all new platform seemingly. Now Honda is working with Sony for a Fila, the Sony Honda Mobility Partnership. So, so Sony and Honda are already working together for electric vehicles. This partnership is a bit different. We know automakers like to partner with sound companies. For example, Honda likes working with Bose or Acura likes working with ELS, even though they've just ditched them for Bang & Olufsen. They source and partner with different companies for entertainment purposes within the car. This is taking it to the next level, Honda, with Afila partnering um, with the sound system for Sony, partnering with the screen technology for Sony, partnering with the cameras and the sensors and the autonomy with Sony. So this sort of partnership is more than just speakers and an amplifier. This is on in a completely different level. And these Afila vehicles will be produced at a Honda factory here in North America in Ohio, I believe. And this vehicle is riding on Honda's next-gen EV platform that will see vehicles of, other than the Afila come out in 2026, probably some Acuras as well. Now that we have our history up to speed, here. We know what's going on with these companies and electrification. And this is coming out of Japan. So we're, we're going to like circle back to why that could be important here in a little bit. Nissan Motors considering tie up with Honda Motor in electric vehicles that could include joint procurement and development. Nissan is looking at moving to a common EV powertrain or e-axle. So commoditizing their powertrains, if you think about it that way. In the past, all these automakers have created the, their own engine designs for internal combustion. And that's really been their signature. Outside of design, their powertrains is what makes them most unique. You could say transmissions to a lesser degree, but engines themselves in the past is the signature, the heartbeat, um, the soul of these automobiles. But now we're getting to electrification. All electric motors feel the same. So how do we mass produce these e-axles with class leading power to performance and cost to performance uh, as well? And so that's what Nissan wants to do here with Honda. The thing is, Honda, Honda is probably way further ahead than Nissan at this point 
on their next gen EV architecture. So I think I think Nissan has a lot more to gain here than Honda. But we know Nissan, you know, the Aria, it's it's, it's an okay EV. It's not, you know, the world's greatest EV. It has a really nice interior. The problem is should have been branded as an Infiniti here in the United States. And, you know, they were out, out in front with the Leaf all those years ago, and the Leaf is... A, no one talks about it anymore, except of snapping up maybe a used one for cheap on the market for a local grocery get or something like that. But discussions with Nissan are still in the early stage and Honda's stance on the partnership remains unclear. And going forward, they may discuss joint battery procurement and vehicle development. The goal is to bring down EV costs as competition has ramped up with the rise of the Chinese players, especially BYD. And BYD benefits from in-house sourcing of components such as batteries. We know Tesla, especially Tesla fanboys, like to talk about how Teslas are vertically integrated, which is great for the company. It lowers costs. It makes um, decisions faster. Uh, you're able to make improvements quicker as well with the vertical integration. And it's just the, the best way to do it on a large scale. However, BYD might have them beat in that regard. We know Toyota is very vertically integrated as well. And a lot of these companies like these startups with BYD and Tesla have modeled uh, Toyota as kind of like a really good starting place and they've improved upon Toyota's uh, production methods and how they do business. Now Toyota's starting to learn a little bit from its competition and they're starting to catch up now. Nissan's nowhere close. Honda, it's hard to say. We just don't have the product yet for them. I would say they're much closer uh, to having a pretty well vertically integrated system. We know of their joint venture uh, with LG Kim to build their own batteries. Now, they still have to split the cost with LG Kim to build these batteries, but it's still, they have a big control over the sourcing of their batteries and the cost of those batteries as well. But Toyota's taking it to that next step by buying out Panasonic out of their joint venture. And with EVs, I mean, they're essentially having to change from one type of business to a completely different type of business. If you're a legacy auto, Nissan, doesn't have the profit margins and maybe not the investments to be able to do it on their own. That's why they're reaching out to Fisker. That's why they're reaching out to Honda here. They remind us that battery electric vehicles are about 20% of the sales in China. It's what, like 7 8% here in the United States. And they also announced that uh, this past year, in 2023, Chinese exports rose past Japanese car exports for the first time ever. Chinese automakers are beginning to surge as well in Southeast Asia. This is a big problem area for Honda, Toyota, Nissan, Mitsubishi. They have such a large uh, product mix down there and a huge market. And if they cannot keep up with the Chinese, then the market's lost. The game's over. Nikasia reminds us that Nissan has three electric models. When I was in Japan at the Japan Mobility Show, I showed you guys also the Nissan Sakura. It's a K car that is one of the best selling K cars right now in Japan. It's fully battery electric. It's super cute. I would love to have one here in the States just as a city runabout. And it would only cost about $15,000 or so. With this news coming out of Japan, is this partnership only going to be a Japan domestic production partnership, it's a possibility. We What do we get from Japan right now for uh, Nissan vehicles? Well, we get the Armada, we get the Aria, uh, we get some of the Rogues. I think that might be it. Now, Nissan wants to move all Rogue production back to Japan because it's cheaper to make them there and then export them to America from japan yeah the gtr as well as the z is made in japan but those are such low volume they don't i mean it doesn't really make a difference honda makes no vehicles in japan for the united states market you could say the the type r but again such a low volume vehicle that it doesn't make a difference no acuras are built over in japan so if this partnership is just for japanese production nissan and honda it doesn't affect us whatsoever unless they start importing evs from japan nissan does that already but they need to make it domestically in north america both of these companies are evs to qualify for 
the EV tax credits and other tax breaks on their behalf. So if this partnership flows not only from Japan, but well into North America, what could we see? I don't think you're going to see Hondas being built in a Nissan plant and vice versa. They would probably share similar motors and inverters, maybe same platform technology, maybe same software underneath, and designs will be completely different. Build quality could be different, right? Because they're going to be built at different plants. It's really hard to speculate on how this could change the North American market. I mean, anytime you're teaming up two powerhouses, the product is inevitably going to get better. I mean, I guess there's always a possibility it doesn't. And some of you are like, oh, Nissan, I don't want Nissan to work with Honda. Or I don't want Honda to work with Nissan. Well, this partnership makes a heck of a lot more sense than Nissan working with the French company Renault. It makes a heck of a lot more sense than Honda working with an American company in General Motors. This makes sense to me. Now, Mitsubishi, where, how does Mitsubishi fall in this? Well, Mitsubishi just should probably get out of North America. <laughs> like I don't know I don't know what can save them in North America but I'm sure if they stick around they could benefit somehow from this as well. This could be a start of a new alliance. Mitsubishi Nissan Honda maybe. See a Renault, see a General Motors and we could see um a, a Japanese conglomerate here of some some degree and and then you would have on the other end of the Japanese stick you would have Toyota, Subaru, Mazda. And then you have some outliers like a Suzu, which is no, so, so no longer sold here uh, for production cars. You have Suzuki, which is no longer sold here for production cars. Toyota does own a large part of Suzuki and Yamaha. It could, it, this could happen. I, do I want it to happen? I, I, I don't know. If it makes the cars better, yes. If it makes the cars cheaper and better, double yes. Am I going to be upset? I don't think so if they decide to work together. I think there's a lot of benefits to be had, but I'm sure you guys are going to have lots of opinions down below. I know Nissan's kind of in a dumpster fire here in the United States with their inability to sell their 2023 Rogues while 2024 production model year Rogues are flooding the, the market too. And then they are just selling all their cars, well, not all their cars, almost half their cars to rental companies because of the lack of consumer demand. It's bizarre what's going on with Nissan, but they need to make some big waves. But rest in peace, internal combustion at this point. No RB26s and no V -tech technology on, you know, VC turbos or anything. Nothing, all that stuff is dead, unfortunately. Engine development is really dropped off. I know Toyota has just said recently that they're going to keep developing engines and, and finding out ways to run them on hydrogen or, or alternate fuels. That's definitely a part of the future. But new engine technology, I don't know how they could work on it together. It's all EV talks, all EV all the time right now. But I got to end it there. Thank you guys for all your support. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.